So I've got a hold of something that I've not ever played with before and yet it's something that I've always wanted to and uh, got it off a nice Ukrainian man actually on eBay. The postal service is still working out of Ukraine so that's good. And I bought some Nixie tubes off him. These are um, IN15A and B and they're not actually the numbers of Nixie tubes if you know what a Nixie tube is. You can make very trendy clocks with them. These are old Russian. They're sort of like valves is the best way to describe them. These are digits like what and percent and some other letters. But I thought I'd just try with these that were cheap and then I might try and do something with a clock with the actual numeric ones. The numeric ones are really popular, so they're more expensive, a lot more expensive. So I think I bought about six of these for, I think it was less than £10 delivered. So that wasn't bad considering it came from Ukraine as well. So, so they're quite simple to drive, really. You put about 180 volts into one of the pins, although that's a quite a high voltage. And then you ground those pins at the pin that you want to light up, which correlates to whatever the digit is. So I don't really know what these digits are, but I just thought I'd try and light one up. So a step up transformer or a step up power supply, a, a book boost, they call it. And um, for 180 volts, actually, it wasn't well, it wasn't that cheap. I mean, this was more expensive than these, although probably if I'd have bought this and uh, not from the UK, it would be cheaper. So this uh, you put 12 to 24 volts in and you get I think you can adjust it, but you get 100, 120, 130 volts out of it. So I'm going to try with this first. So let's find some wires to put into it. So some of my wires, I think, are going to get in the way today in the way of the camera because so my camera is here uh, above my desk and my power supply is here so i apologize if some of the wires get in the way but let's get some wires into this first so i need my voltage in and my voltage out and they've got like wago connectors they're not they're not actually wago they're slightly different well they might be wago but they're different than the wago ones that i've seen before so let's find something to push down on it so I've just got to put some voltage into this and get the voltage out. So it goes ground. Uh, there's another thing. I don't know what it is and voltage in. So I put a little red dash on that so I wouldn't get these mixed up because, as you know, I am prone to doing that. And is this as this is higher voltage, I don't really want to mess about and do this one wrong. So that will be the voltage in. All right. And then let's get my voltage out. So this will go to the, the tube. But I'm going to measure the voltage first and see what happens some whiskers of wire coming out so I don't want that to touch the other one because this is higher voltage than I'm used to playing about with so I want to try and be safe as safe as I can be okay now I've cut these slightly different lengths as well because I'm going to put crocodile clips on these so if if they're the same length there's much more likely that you're going to touch so my bench power supply then let me get my other camera out so if you want to see my setup here that's how I'm set up normally here's my desk there's spider maths logo and here's my power supply so this is like a multimeter side which measures uh voltage in and this is variable power supply so this one does five volts and then i can set these to whatever i want this 10 volts here is doing the light for my desk as well so i've got a light up there now i'm going to use this to put the 12 volts into into this to begin with so let's get some crocodile clips in there voltage into this device and then another pair of clips for measuring the voltage out okay so the wires are going to be in the way i apologize for that i'll try and put them out of the way as much as i can all right so at the moment this one's just putting out well hardly anything so let's connect that first so this is my voltage in so black to and red i see those won't touch now so it makes it a bit safer and then these are the output to the multimeter so let's connect black to there so this will be what connects to the nixie tubes in the end all right and again so those shouldn't short so if you see that let's just zoom out a bit oh that's terrible isn't it so <laughs> i'll keep this zoomed in all right so if i go back to the power supply now I'll just try and focus in on that a little bit better so this should be measuring the output and this is measuring the input so if i slightly turn this up as i turn this up i should get oh hang on make sure that's set to voltage and dc all right so i'm, I'm getting six volts out of that but i'm only putting seven volts in so i think we need to go to at least 12 volts there so as soon as i go to nine look i'm putting about 100 and 
nearly 130 volts out now straight away so obviously there's some there's a trigger voltage that it can't do anything until so seven it's not really doing it but when you get to about 12 volts then it starts to send voltage out to be honest i'm going to leave it at 129 i don't want to put it up to 180 at the moment let's just see whether i can get anything working from that so if i look at these tubes i noticed that that pin there which i think might be pin seven i think these go around like a clock so i think that's pin one and the top one's pin 12 but that one's pin seven it's got a little arrow next to it and if you look inside and look at all these pins that are coming up from it you see that one's got uh, something around it so that's a special pin anyway so i think that's the voltage in so the first thing i should do then is let's get a another pair of crocodile clips i think that's, so that should be the anode i think uh, if i understand it correctly so i'm going to clip that to there i don't want that to clip any of the others so maybe i'll do it that way this isn't really the best way of doing it I don't have any sockets for this so it's something that i will work on so that's now got that voltage going in and then we need something to drain the voltage out i'm hoping if i can carefully maneuver this so if i now touch any of these others now i don't think all of them are connect connected but let's go and just touch some and see whether i can get something to light up there we go all right so can you see what that one is so that one works so that looks like it's an h I don't know if i turn the light off it would be better let me just turn the house lights off yeah so it's like a warm glowing h there i think you can see that can't you so that's working so it's actually as easy as that to fire up a nixie tube assuming your nixie tube works so well, there's another one that one Okay, yes, yeah, so that's ohms, omega. I think that's a symbol for ohms. So these might have been in a, like a huge digital multimeter or something like that. Any more that light up? Well, that's all I'm going to get out of it. But yes, yeah, so that's first experiment with Nixie tubes. Now I'm really, let me just put the house lights back on. I don't think the voltage would hurt me, but 130 volts is a lot higher than what I normally play about with on my desk. So I'm just being really careful with them. But I think the next thing to do is to create some form of, let's just turn this off. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circuit board, a printed circuit board, because I found these on Thingiverse there were these little sockets for them so i think it would be quite nice to create a board that's like a, a tester board for these um, so that i can have a printed circuit board with that in and i can push them in maybe if i put some dupont connectors into there and i can make it make my own little um, valve or nixie tube socket i'm going to go and design a board for this so creating a pcb for this well i've just got a simple circuit really all i'm doing is i've got a header strip there and this bit is the nixie tube which i just got from a library symbol and then there's this variable resistor which is one of these little things it's little blue things with a little tuning screw on it that changes the resistor so I'm, I'm going to build that into this little board if i don't want to use this i can just blank it out um, but that's essentially it is so it's quite simple the circuitry is quite simple really um, but let's have a look at the pcb i've created so this is spider nixie one so this all of this here was just something out of the easy eda library and it looks sort of the same as this um, 3d printed thing so hopefully uh, when this arrives it will be exactly what i want let's just have a look at the board so hopefully this is what the board should look like uh, when it arrives and when it's populated um, i'm not using a header like that i'm just using one of the standard little molex type headers i think they're called molex but that was this does the same thing and a little bit on the side where i can just clip the voltage in directly into it on a crocodile clip i thought that would be good I wanted the board colour to be purple though. Yeah, so hopefully it'll look something like this when it arrives. Well, that was quick. Ah, as you see, I might have opened this previously. All right, well, they look 
they look pretty good there I love the purple all right so that's my first spider nixie do these line up yeah they seem to line up okay and to modify this slightly as you see because the holes that the, I suppose the original Nixie bases had these cool like offsets but um so I moved the hole from there to there but I've just left the silk screen on so I could see what I've done um, and there's this hole in the middle as well I don't know whether I'll need that no I don't need that do I because these tubes oh they've got a little bump ah but that's okay because that's why that mount will work lovely all right so looking at this though this was just a, a stuck library item for these tubes now I don't like this so it fits in does it yeah well it would fit in if it wasn't for that hole so if I'm making some of these to actually solder it in which I don't want to do but if I'm making them to solder it in I'll have to make sure that I knock out that hole maybe I'll do that in a v2 or maybe even a v3 um, but all of the the holes seem to line up but see the holes are massive so what I'm planning to do is use something like these little header strips this is a, a round pin one so do these fit on there yeah so my plan is to put one of these in each of there and it's going to be flopping about everywhere isn't it with that big hole so i think i'm going to have to order these with some new holes all right so these are the original ones the others haven't arrived yet but you see let's just check the rest of it so yeah the header board uh, fits in there well i'm not going to use this for the header i'm just going to use the other pins to go in there and then i can touch the um, crocodile clips down there to do a quick test of the tubes but can I let's see if I can take one of these out I suppose the best way would be to push it forward wouldn't it so see if I can just push it down no nope. <laughs> all right so that doesn't work let's snap that one off I might do it with the others um the other sockets not these round pin ones in fact that might be better anyway but um so is there an easy way to take this off? They must be moulded on. I wonder if I nibbled it. Uh, that will do it. So a lot to do if I'm making a load of those. But I'm hoping that will fit in there. Yeah. So what I could do, I suppose, is get a load of those. Put that on top. And then try and solder them. I think I'll have a go at that. Well, this might take a while, so you don't want to see this. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, I don't want to do that again. I discovered actually it's much easier if I just snip them, holding them in there as opposed to snip them first. But anyway, that's all done. Because these are so big they shouldn't be that hard to solder but let's get those soldered then so that wasn't as hard as I was expecting and I think that has worked so can I plug this in here not as such I don't want to pull off either so it doesn't even fit with the bracket taken off. So I think I've got to do more work on that. So I'll stop this video here. In the next video, I'll develop this further, maybe even order another one. So if you want to see what's coming next, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, bye.